All right, boys and girls, let me know if you can hear me okay. I am all in on two really big stories today. Let's start with my name is Clay Travis. I am your fearless leader. This is Outkick the Show presented by Odd Shark. Go to oddshark.com for all of your gambling and informational related needs, and you will be glad that you did so. Uh, we are off and running, and I appreciate everybody coming in. Yes, we are going to have ads, and yes, we are going to make a lot of money all day long. Appreciate everybody rolling in. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with right now. Going to start right now with the LeBron James story. I will get to the United Airlines story. If you're here for the United Airlines story, my thesis is this passenger is a jerk, and you need to hear why. But let's start with LeBron James, who also is a jerk. All right, let's talk about the LeBron James situation. I think it's being massively undercovered, which is crazy because the LeBron James story is so huge. So let's start here. Okay, LeBron James on Friday. Let's start here. Start here. Tyron Lue on Friday afternoon says that he's not going to rest any players until they win the Eastern Conference. Then on Friday, look out, three white dudes from the Atlanta Hawks are rolling into town. And what happens? The biggest upset of the season in the NBA, according to the odds makers. The Hawks go on the road and they win against the Cavs. All right, well, that seems like a pretty big upset. That seems unacceptable. But the Cavs have a comeback game on Sunday. On Sunday, they get up by a huge amount, 26 points, and then they blow that game as well. They lost back-to-back -back games, the Cleveland Cavaliers did, to the Atlanta Hawks. That seems like an ideal scenario for the Hawks, the worst-case scenario for the team that they are playing against, the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Cavs get on their private jet, they fly to Miami, and what do you think would happen? Michael Jordan never lost a 26-point lead. Kobe Bryant never lost a 26-point lead. In fact, it's never happened to either of those guys. It's only happened three times in the history of the league. If you or I lost a 26-point lead, you know what we would do? We probably would not go out to live nightclub with two of our teammates, J.R. Smith and Tristan Thompson. But that's what LeBron James did. And then... We put up a video, you can go see it on my Twitter feed, of LeBron at Live Nightclub. Then he had the gall and the absurd decision-making on his part not to go play. Think about how crazy this is. Not to go play on Monday night with the Heat, and now he's not going to play against the Raptors either. Why does this matter? Can you imagine Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant or anybody else from an era before LeBron James making the decision that the Eastern Conference Championship does not matter, that home court advantage doesn't matter. Because even after the back-to-back -back losses to the Atlanta Hawks, all he had to do, LeBron and co., all they had to do was beat the Heat and, and on top of that, beat the Raptors at home in Cleveland. And they still would have won the tiebreak over the Celtics no matter what the Celtics did. Instead, like a petulant child, LeBron James lost a 26-point lead and then went to live nightclub and partied the night away the day before a game. Don't have a problem with guys going out. Don't have a problem with guys going out the night before games. But if you are going to do it, you should still be obligated to take care of your own business. This is not resting after you've already achieved the championship. It's not resting week 17 in the NFL after you've already locked in home field advantage. This is not trying to win a conference so that you have home field, home court advantage throughout. I think this is a massive story. And amazingly, amazingly, this story is not being covered by ESPN. You got LeBron James, who chooses not to compete for a championship, chooses not to compete for home court advantage, and goes to a nightclub the night before a game in Miami with video of it that should be running all the time on ESPN. Why didn't ESPN cover it? Because they're in the ball washing business. Because they're in the business of grabbing LeBron James's balls and cradling them and blowing on them if they are too hot and giving them cold compresses if they are and, and warming them up by rubbing their hands together, Mr. Miyagi style, and putting them on his balls afterwards. ESPN is in the business of ball washing LeBron James. LeBron James can walk into Bristol, drop his pants and say, I want a line of people at ESPN to line up and kiss my black ass right now. And you know how many people would line up? Hundreds. 
if not thousands, some of the top executives at ESPN, they would walk up and they would give a big, big smooch onto LeBron James's hairy ass. And then they would cup his balls and ask him whether or not they were holding them correctly because that's what ESPN does. It picks favorites and it ball washes. Odell Beckham Jr. goes down to Miami during his vacation day, his day off, goes out on a boat, ESPN covers it like it's the freaking apocalypse. Oh my God, how dare Odell Beckham Jr. go on his day off to Miami and spend the day on a yacht. Poor ODB got dragged over the coals like he was the worst human being on the planet. He got tarred and feathered. He got absolutely destroyed by ESPN. The media followed suit. What in the world happens when LeBron James does something worse? He doesn't win a championship. He doesn't play for one. He goes out at Live Nightclub, and then he doesn't go out and play at all. He puts his other people out to play for him instead, and not a peep from ESPN. Credit to my producer this morning, Jason Martin, for realizing why that was. I tweeted out a picture of it because ESPN's top two NBA reporters who covered LeBron James have a book coming out where they ball wash LeBron James about what an incredible run he had to bring a championship to Cleveland. They're out there palpating the grundle. They're out there stretching the taint, making sure that LeBron James' groin is in working order. Whatever ESPN needs to give him, LeBron James gets. It's a different kind of story. It's a different kind of treatment. There are different rules for different athletes. It's important to realize who's honest and who's dishonest. I am honest. ESPN is not. Listen to my show, 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern. Go download the podcast. This is one of the most egregious examples I've seen in recent history of ESPN choosing not to cover athletes similarly because of the relationship they have with the athlete. They want LeBron James to like them. LeBron James and his posse puts out the word, you're not going to cover this. It's like Jedi mind tracks, mind tricks. ESPN says, we are not going to cover this. Even though TMZ has a video up of LeBron James in live nightclub, even though they argued that his calf was strained. I don't know about you. The way I get over a calf strain is not to go party all night long. And again, LeBron James has the right to go out. He can go out and do whatever he wants. But if you're arguing that you aren't healthy enough to play in a game, and you're arguing that you don't need to try and go get a championship, why in the world should that not be a massive story? With everything that's going on in the world right now of sports, this is the number one story without question. I covered it. We talked about it for three hours. We're talking about it on this show. Ask yourself a question. Why isn't that being covered by ESPN? Why isn't ESPN playing the video from Inside Live Nightclub? Why isn't ESPN asking, man, seems kind of strange to me that LeBron James could be healthy enough to go to a nightclub right after coming off a 26-point defeat and then not be able to play on Monday night in Miami. Let me also ask you this. Do you think Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan would have been out of the nightclub celebrating if their team had just given a t- up a 26-point lead to fall into a dead tie with the Boston Celtics for number one overall home court? All these people out there who want to argue that LeBron James is the same as Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was not a bitch. LeBron James is the king bitch of America. He is the king of millennials. He is a total bitch. He complained about the posse treatment, the use of the word posse. He accused Charles Barkley of throwing off all-star game practice, and then he doesn't show up for an actual game. And he appeared on the cover of Sports Illustrated with a big safety pin on his chest. This guy is a total pussy. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for him. This guy's a pussy. All right, questions for you guys about the LeBron James situation. People sometimes say, you don't let people who disagree with you talk enough on the radio. And I'm fine bringing people on the radio, but I want them to be entertaining. And if they can't make the argument as well as I can, why should I not cut them off and make their argument better than they can? Um, It is a unquestioned fact, in my opinion. And here's the other question about this. This is a big issue for the NBA. LeBron James basically is serving notice that he doesn't care about winning the overall league championship, right, for his conference in the regular season, being the number one overall seed. If he's saying that seeding doesn't matter, why did he play in November and December? Why don't you just sit out for two months? That's the issue that I think the NBA is going to run into. If LeBron believes that his team is the best, then why does it matter if you play for the first 25 or 30 games of the season? Why not sit out the first 25 or 30 games of the season, stay healthy, keep your feet up, rest, and then come back for the final 50 and play through the playoffs? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Why would you care? 
Why would you care whether you're the one seed or the eight seed or the seven seed or the six seed? If you think your team is the best in the East, then seeding doesn't matter, which also means that the regular season in the NBA doesn't matter at all, which is the argument I've been making for a long time. And if you have players like LeBron James sitting out when they should be trying to win championships, that's a big story. The fact that ESPN is not covering it, again, I tell you guys you need to stay Twitter woke, fam. You need to stay woke, fam. You can't just rely on ESPN to cover the news because they cover the news that is beneficial to ESPN and they cover it in a way that's beneficial to ESPN. 100% the truth. story like this is a perfect example. Outkick tells the truth. ESPN tells whatever is good for their business. There's a difference. I'm honest. They're dishonest. you got to learn who to trust. The guy who's in charge of Outkick and has nothing to lose and in fact is only selling his authenticity or the network that's full of shit. Four-letter network that has decided that LeBron James sitting out and partying in Live Nightclub is not worth it. All right, what questions do you have? You're selling ads too. Yeah, 100% I'm selling ads. You know who advertises with me? Companies who want me to tell the truth. That's the truth. You point to me something I've been dishonest on ever and I'll be glad to acknowledge it. Guess what? Ain't gonna happen. All I get paid to do is give you my exact honest opinion every single day. And that's what I do. Uh, questions. Questions out there about the LeBron situation and then I'm moving over to the uh, I'm moving over to this United story. Don't get hit by trains, amen. There's no doubt about that. Uh, okay, moving on to this United situation. Moving on to this United situation. This is an example of why I typically don't get that riled up about viral videos that suddenly start circling on the internet. Because the vast majority of the time, viral videos that start circling on the internet are giving you 15 seconds of a picture and not giving you context in which they are situated. So let me dive through this. If you haven't seen it yet, there is a video of a United, uh, United Airlines dragging an Asian man off of a video, off of an airline. What happened there is pretty simple. I'm going to give you the background, then I'll answer your questions about it. I'm just going to give you the background. The, the, the flight was overbooked. People say, why do you overbook flights? The reason, according to what I've read, is that about 5% of people don't show up for flights. So the reason why you overbook flights is because it allows you to get more people into a plane than would otherwise be able to get onto a plane. Because if you didn't overbook a flight, when those 5% of people don't show up, then those, those seats would be unused. That's why they have, for instance, standby seats, because sometimes they don't know if people are going to show up or not. Otherwise, you would not be able to use those seats. You're then flying with empty seats, which is inefficient, so you go ahead and try to sell. Again, 5% of people do not show up for a flight. That means that, what, in an in a, in a airplane of 150 people, that on average, six or seven people will not show up for a flight. That's over the course of a season, a year, whatever else. When they were overbooked, the mistake that United had was putting everybody on the plane. My bet is that suddenly they found out after they had already ordered, boarded the plane that these four people had to get to Louisville in order to take over another United flight in order to be able to fly people because otherwise that flight would not have been able to take off. So faced with that situation of a flight not being able to take off in Louisville, Kentucky, they made the decision to try to get those four people on. Okay, They tried to get those four people on, and as a result, they made an offer to everybody, will some of you take money to get back off the plane? They would not do it. Then usually what happens in those situations is they go into the situation, they go into the list, and they start looking at the four people who have paid the least, whatever else the situation is, and they take them off the plane. So, with the plane not having taken off yet, and with those four people needing to get to Louisville to be able to take off on another plane, otherwise which would have to be canceled or those people waiting on that flight would not be able to take off. They then go on and they pick four people. Two of those people, when told that they have to get off the plane, I'm sure were not happy, but got off the plane. This guy said, I refuse to get off the plane. So when you refuse to get off an airplane in a post 9-11 era, what do you do? You call the local police. The local police get on the plane, they ask this guy to get off, he says he will not get off, that he is a doctor, and they say, what in the world are you doing here, please get off. He refuses to get off, eventually, what do you do when somebody refuses to get off a plane? You have to drag them off the plane. So this guy had the perfect decision to make, where he could have been very upset. 
He could have gotten off the plane. He could have been furious. He could have been so angry, right? He has the total right to do that. But there is no other way to get, like, just think about this. I'm six foot, 180 pounds. If somebody tells me to get off a plane and I say no, eventually what options do you have? Either the plane cannot take off, right? The plane cannot take off until I get off the plane. This guy, the other people on the plane, the other three people that were kicked off, I'm sure were angry. One of them was his wife. He walked, she walked right off. This guy refused to get off the plane. And then he tried to play that I'm a doctor, I've got patients tomorrow card. And when he refused to get off the plane, I want you to think, I'm, I'm trying to give you both perspectives here, right? This is what lawyers do. I can argue either side. When he refused to get off the plane, I want you to put yourself in the perspective of the police officers, security officers. These were not united people. United brought in the police officers. It's different than what I said yesterday because I've done all my research on this. United brings in the police officers. The police officers are told the plane cannot take off until this man is off the plane. What options do they have? They said nicely, can you please get off the plane? Guy won't get off the plane. Sir, we're asking you to get off the plane. United has the right and the authority to kick people off of the plane. Okay? Whether you agree or disagree with that, legally, United owns that plane. They can take him off the plane. Okay? He refuses to get off, and so they make the decision to grab him. He goes limp, and they drag him off. To me, that's on that guy. Straight up. If you refuse to comply with police officers who are telling you that you cannot stay on the plane, that United has the right to take you off the plane, legally that's indisputable, what are they supposed to do? Everybody watches that video and says, well, it's unacceptable. What are you talking about? Those were police officers giving lawful commands and the guy didn't listen to them. They are renting a space on his plane. They have the right to take him off the plane. That's the law. At any point in time, they can refuse him to get off the plane. He chose not to make that decision. Once you choose not to get off the plane, you're not leaving them a lot of options. The other three people did not get dragged off the plane. I'm sure they were upset. I'm sure they wanted to take that flight too. Also worth acknowledging that you are in Chicago and going to Louisville. What is that, like a five-hour drive? It's like a five-hour drive. Worst case scenario, you get a rental car and you drive five hours. That sucks, but you get paid several thousand dollars for your seat and you drive five hours. It's not like he was in London and he had to be in L.A., all right? He had to drive five hours, worst case scenario. The United people, I think, did nothing wrong in terms of the way that he was taken off the plane. Now, in an ideal situation, you don't allow people to board. I'm sure you have done it. I've done it a ton of times. You've been told at an airport, all airport, all just about every airline overbooks, right? All the time. The number of times I have been sitting at a gate and heard, I will give you X number of dollars if you will not get on this plane. I've even done it before. When I was in college on spring break trip, I took money not to get on an airplane because I was like, holy shit, I get like triple my cost of my air, air ticket and I'm on spring break and I get to stay an extra day in Miami? Sign me the fuck up. I'm good to go. In a hotel room? So I'll go back to school late. A lot of you might have done that, made that decision. People watch this video and they think something incredibly wrong happened here. It did it. It did it. This situation, that guy was wrong. Now everybody's up in arms because the Louisville newspaper wrote a story about this guy. This guy's doctor's license was suspended for a decade because he traded pills for gay sex. That's according to the Louisville Cour Courier Journal. People say, well, why is this a truce? Why does this story matter? Well, a couple of reasons. One, this guy specifically said, I'm a doctor, so I've got to go see my patients. So once you try to play the I'm a doctor card, your role as a doctor is fair game. When you pay somebody for gay sex with illegal prescriptions and lose your license for 10 years, that factors in to what kind of doctor you are. I'm just telling you. Second, if he's going to file a lawsuit, the fact that he was, you know, lost his medical license for a decade and just recently got it back is also factored in. 
There's people out there like, why does his past history matter? Because he made his past history matter the moment he said, I'm a doctor, I have to be able to get back to my patients. And by patients, he meant who knows what. But again, he was barred as a doctor for 10 years. I'm surprised he could even get his medical license back after he made the decision under the law to trade pills for gay sex, which is what he was allegedly doing and what he pled guilty to and took five years of probation for and lost his medical license for a decade for. Okay? That's the truth. So there's this attempt and desire on the internet for things to either be all good or all bad. There's no nuance. There's no middle of the road. This is what frustrates me so much about the internet. Everybody just always wants to assume, oh, this corporation is evil. Oh, those people are evil. Oh, those cops are evil. Nobody ever considers the context. And that's why lawyers matter. Because we look at the whole evidence, evidentiary situation and try to analyze it. Now, United was not without fault here. What could United have done better? They could have not boarded the people on the plane. They could have offered more money to try to get people to leave and offered as much money as it possibly took for four people to stand up and voluntarily leave. They could have turned it into an auction. But at some point in time, if people are not willing to give up their seats, and who knows what that number would have eventually taken, then you have to make the decision, we're going to get these guys on the plane because we have to get to Louisville so we can take off on the other plane. That's the truth. 100%. Moreover, again, with this doctor, did you see the videos of this dude? This dude looks like he has severe psychological issues. I ask you, is it a normal adult behavior to when police officers walk over to you and say, I'm sorry, I understand that you don't want to leave this plane. I understand that you are upset. I understand that this is not an ideal situation for you. But they have the right to force you off this plane. They have picked the four people who paid the least and or uh, are going to have to be compensated the least to be taken off this plane. You are one of them. And as a result, I have to ask you to leave. They have the right to do this. If you still are sitting there and you say, I refuse to leave, that's on you. That's your decision. A hundred percent. That's on you. And so the fact that you get your head hit or the fact that you start to bleed or whatever it is, that's on you. You had the right to stand up and walk off and get compensated thousands of dollars for you and your wife's flights with zero issue. Nothing goes viral. Nothing happens at all. Just like the other three people did who got off that plane. Now, I'm not saying I'd be happy about it. If I were on that plane, I'd be very upset too. But put yourself into that context. When the police come and tell you that you have to get off the plane in a post-9-11 life, are you really going to fight them and make them drag your ass off the plane? I guarantee you that I would not let them drag me off the plane. I would stand up and I would walk off. I would be angry. I would be very upset. You have a right to be angry when you get on a plane and you're expecting to land 30 minutes later where you need to go. I would be upset. But that is the truth. He created this situation. We're in a post 9-11 era. After 9-11, flight attendants and pilots don't have a lot of appreciation or expectation for putting up with unruly passengers. People get kicked off the money, get kicked off planes all the time for a variety of different things that you or I might not agree with. But that's the discretion that we give flight attendants and police and pilots in this day and age. 100%. So how did he create the situation? He created the situation because his punk ass wouldn't get up and get off the plane. That created the situation. There were four people who had to get to Louisville that were more important than him in the decision of the airline. That's the airline's discretion and their ability to make that determination. He was told that under the law, they were bumping him. He's entitled to compensation as a result. That's the truth. And he refused to get up. When the police come and stand beside you and tell you you have to leave, you have to leave. Period. If he fights back, he goes to jail. If you, just like if you fight with the police at any point. Here's the deal. If the police tell you to fucking do something, you fucking do it. I don't understand why this is a complicated rule, okay? I'm a lawyer. I, if a police officer tells me to do something that I feel is unconstitutional, guess what? If he tells me he's going to arrest me if I don't do it, then I have a choice to make. I can be arrested or I can listen to what the, the officer has to say. 
almost every time, so far in my life, in fact, every time an officer has told me to do something, I have done it. I have a zero arrest record right now, okay? Most of you have a zero arrest record. Do you know why? Because when a fucking police officer tells you to do something, you do it. On a plane especially. If a police officer, three of them, are standing above you and they tell you that the airline has the right, which they legally do, to tell you to leave, then you get the fuck off the plane. You don't put them in a situation where they have to drag your ass off the plane. Again, what do you want the officers to do in that situation? They are not being listened to. They arrive and say, 100%, you got to get off this plane. Period. That's the truth. And I don't think, looking at this situation, somebody's like, oh, he's going to get so much money. The fuck he is? From who? United didn't drag him off the plane. Is he going to sue the city of Chicago? Good fucking luck with that. Good fucking luck with that. You want to make an argument that the police officers have given used too much force? What's his damages? He got a bloody nose? He got a viral video that he caused to go viral? You want to get up in front of a jury and say, so this doctor here who claimed that he needed to go back to go see his patients, oh, you mean the doctor who got disbarred, lost his license for 10 years because he was given a gay dude pills to fuck him? Oh, that guy? Oh, you mean the grown-ass man who refused to listen to police officers when they told him he had to get off the plane because they didn't want to have to leave a flight behind back in Louisville? That guy? You mean the one guy out of four who refused to get off when the police came and told him he needed to get off the plane? That guy? The guy who gave pills to his gay lover and lost his uh, medical license for a decade is standing up screaming, I'm a, I'm a doctor, i got to go see my patients. The guy who couldn't realize that he was five hours away, couldn't get a rental car, worst case scenario, look, it sucks, I'm sorry. What do you want the police officers to do? That guy? That guy's going to get millions of dollars? The fuck he is. Not if I'm the CEO of United. I'm not sending that message. If they settle with this guy, what they're sending the message on is every single person who doesn't want to get off an airplane needs to get dragged off an airplane so they can go viral and so they can get money. The fuck I'm letting that happen? I'm going taking that case to trial. I'm not settling for this guy for any amount. He's going to have to sue the Chicago police. He's going to have to sue United. He's going to have to get on the witness stand and tell his story, explain why he was behaving erratically. Maybe they're going to do a drug test on him. Was he under the influence of any substances? All that stuff. 100%. 100%. $800 million debt later, definitely a smart move. You motherfuckers don't understand how the stock market works, okay? The stock price goes up and down every single day, and it doesn't always stay there. Tomorrow, the stock price can go up a dollar, and there's no cost whatsoever to United other than the cost of the bad publicity. And really, all publicity is good publicity. Honestly, that's the truth. So you guys out there who are like, oh, they lost $800 billion. They lost a billion dollars. You have no idea how stock prices work. Stock price fluctuates every single day. Every single day. This is the best case scenario for United, finding out that this guy lost his medical license because he gave pills to somebody for gay sex. And his sympathy as a plaintiff just took a dive big time. This guy, was, uh, this guy worked at like you know putting water in Africa. Oh, man, I'd be nervous. This guy never had an arrest. Oh, I'd be nervous. This guy has a history of being a felon. And when he had an opportunity to get off the plane, he behaved feloniously. He is in the wrong here, and I don't think he deserves any money at all. If anything, there's going to start to be a pivot back in the other direction. People are saying, you know what? Fuck that guy. United Airlines asked him to leave, and he didn't listen to police. United didn't do it themselves. They brought in the police. I believe in truth, justice, and the American way. Fuck that guy who didn't want to listen to the police. Fuck that guy who lost his medical license for a decade and tried to play the I'm a doctor card. Let's talk about what a douchebag move that is. I got to get back home. I'm a doctor. What he's really saying is my job's more important than everybody else on this airplane. Really? You're a doctor? You're a doctor, motherfucker? Were you a doctor when you were given that gay dude pills so he'd fuck you? Oh, because I think you lost your doctor's license for a decade for that. You weren't a doctor for a decade, right? Get him on the witness stand. So when you said you had to get back because you had to go see your patients, in 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, that would have been impossible, right? Yes. Why? 
well, because my law, my my uh, my medical license has been suspended. Oh yeah, what was your medical license suspended for? Because I was giving pills to a gay dude, so he'd fuck me. Oh, hmm. So you've lied before about the reason why you were getting pills and giving them to patients, right? You violated your Hippocratic oath to such an extent that your medical license was suspended for ten years, and that you were on probation for five of those years. Yes. And so you expect me to believe that you're telling the whole truth about what happened to you on that plane? Oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. And why do you think the other three people on that plane listened to the police and got up and left? What were you thinking they were going to do? Were you thinking, sir, that the police officers were just going to turn around and walk off the plane? When they said, you have to leave this plane, did you think they meant, unless you sit here long enough, in which case we'll just turn around and walk off and you'll be able to take off on this plane, never have any issue? I mean, he's going to get destroyed on cross-examination, right? Is that somebody sympathetic to you on the jury? You know, watch that video. Maybe you think there was excessive force used. What I would say is, how do you not use force when a guy refuses to give away a seat? An airplane, there's not a lot of move for, room for movement. You have to reach across, drag somebody out, full-size human. That's not normal behavior. Again, I think I would fuck this guy up on the cross X stand, and if I was united, I would refuse to settle. I would refuse to settle because I'm not sending the message to all the people on my planes that if they're told they have to get off a plane, that if they stay long enough, they can make millions of dollars. Fuck that. you got to listen to the flight attendant. you got to listen to the pilot. And you got to listen to the police. Even, and I'm being honest with you, even when that upsets you. And I understand. I fly all the time. Lots of times flight attendants have told me stuff I don't want to listen to. Lots of times flight attendants have told me stuff that pissed me off. That happens to everybody. But you know what I've done? Managed to not get arrested on an airplane so far. Managed to not get kicked off an airplane so far. That's the truth of the matter. All right, let me tell you all about my watch here. This watch, spectacular. I'll answer your questions here momentarily. Uh, movement watches. They, have, uh, they were founded on the belief style shouldn't break the bank. Watchmaker's goal is to change the way consumers think about fashion by offering high-quality, minimalist products, revolutionary prices. Over a million watches sold to customers in 180-plus countries around the world. Movement solidified itself as the world's fastest-growing watch company. Mine right here, this black model, black on black, great-looking steel model, $195. My wife has a $4,000 watch. Went out to dinner the other night, put them side by side. People couldn't tell which one was the $4,000 watch and which one was the $195 watch. Get hooked up now. I'm telling you, I love it. People love it as well. This company started by two broke college kids. All they wanted to do was make stylish watches. They couldn't afford them. So they do these watches. They start at $95. Bucks. They look like they cost thousands of dollars. And in a department store, you're looking at $400 to $500 for them. They figured out by selling online, they're able to cut out the middleman and the retail markup, providing the best possible price. Classic design, quality construction, styled minimalism. minimalism. Over a million watches sold in over 180 countries. You'll be glad that you did. Get 15% off today with free shipping, free returns by going to movementwatches.com slash outkick. Again, 15% off, free sh shipping, and free returns by going to MVMT watches.com slash outkick mvmt watches.com slash outkick this watch black on black looks awesome on me it won't look as good on you because your hair's not as nice but you can get hooked up too again go to mvmt watches.com 15% off if you go to the page slash outkick all right big time there you go mvmt watches you can see the link right there slash outkick all right any last questions Questions from you guys about LeBron James or the United situation, I will answer them as I see fit. Fire away. Yes, LeBron can't be out in clubs if he's resting. Where in Nashville to get hair like yours, you got to have great jeans. I ran out of gas yesterday. That was, that was unacceptable. That was a tough situation. Uh, my wife's been saying it's going to happen for 16 years. My car was on empty. I thought I had enough to make it to the gas station. I was wrong. I'll talk about it on the radio tomorrow. Major me a culpa. Major me a culpa. I'm going to have to dive back in. I would not settle with United if I were them. Uh, the bombing, I don't know enough about the bombing right now to talk about it. Nashville, I think, has a decent chance to get an MLS team, yes. Bigger whiner, LeBron or NBC? Ooh, that's a great question. Uh, LeBron. Um, is LeBron still depressed? Hillary lost. Yes, that's why he's wearing his safety pin. Argue the Asian guy's side. Okay, that's good. I can flip. I can flip the script. The Asian guy's side would be this. If I were arguing on behalf of the Asian guy, I know nothing about him. I would argue several things. One, I would argue that he'd already boarded the plane. 
Two, I would argue that he is a doctor and he needs to get to Louisville to go see his patients the next day. Three, and this is one that I think could work, I would argue that he doesn't speak English very well and the people who were talking to him were using rapid speech and they were raising their voices, intimidating him, such that he didn't even feel comfortable standing up. He felt like he was being singled out and he didn't understand why and he felt threatened by them. And so when they made the command that he needed to get up and get out of the plane, he didn't understand what they were saying because he felt like they were threatening him. Four, I would say that even though he should have left the plane, the force they used to, to bring him off the plane was excessive. Five, I would say that they violated his rights by not telling him exactly what he was entitled to under the purposes of him being taken off of the plane. Six, I would argue that the fact that he has paid for gay sex by using pills is irrelevant under the circumstances because that was predating this situation. And the fact that he said he's a doctor and he needed to go get, uh, needed to, go get uh, to his patients was in fact not bringing into issue his history as a doctor and or his history of making truthful and ver ver uh, veracity, ver truthful and honest statements rooted in veracity. I would say all of those things. I like United's argument better. I'm not saying he's not going to get any money. I'm saying that the amount of money he would get would be low and that I would not settle with him. I think he's going to have to sue both the city of Chicago as well as United Airlines and you look at the way that situation works, they would argue, you know, like different uh, aspects of the negligence would be attributed to them. And I would think that in this situation, if there is going to be negligence assessed, the vast majority of the negligence would be assessed against the city of Chicago Police Department as opposed to against United Airlines. Because United, all they did was call the authorities when this guy refused to leave the plane as they were requesting. In fact, that is exactly what they're told to do, right? You make the decision to go call the police and bring them in instead of trying to have your employees deal with it. So that would be the argument for the guy if I were trying to argue in favor of the Asian guy. Um, you know, cutting against his argument that he didn't understand the English would be, so why is your doctor claiming that he's a doctor and that he has to get to Louisville? He's making an argument clearly understanding English. Moreover, you can say, look, you're licensed as a doctor. You have to talk to people in English all the time. You can't get licensed as a doctor in this country and then suddenly claim that you don't understand English well enough to be able to make the argument that you can't understand what the police were saying. I think it cuts against his argument substantially that he didn't understand English, which is an argument I would make, again, that he was intimidated and that the officers were bullying him. When you're saying, I'm a doctor, I have to get to Louisville to see my patients, you are playing the I'm a doctor card because you understand exactly what you're being asked to do. In other words, you wouldn't say, I'm a doctor, I have to get to Louisville to see my patients, unless you understood that you were being asked to leave that airline and forced to go some other way. And again, yes, his wife understood English and complied without being dragged off the plane. So I think that's a bad argument. Again, I think this guy does not have that good of an argument. Not to say that the viral you know, tempest that this has caused is not going to be an issue for United, but keep in mind, what companies have to keep in mind about situations like this is that these stories don't last, right? This story will get, like Sean Spicer said something about people not ga getting gassed, right? And people are talking about the Holocaust and Nazis and everything else. It's hard for a story to last much more than 24 days, 24 hours, sorry. Almost no stories last longer than 48 hours. Look at Donald Trump. Guy does something crazy every 48 hours. 72 hours later, it's dead. Only stories that last are when you don't do other crazy shit. Ask Hillary. I mean, this is sadly a lesson of Donald Trump. Think about this. If Hillary Clinton had done a bunch of other crazy shit, everybody wouldn't have gotten fixated on the emails, right? Donald Trump said and did so much other crazy shit that nobody fixated on any one thing that Donald Trump did. He does what I do. Every day I'm going to show up and talk for three hours. And then I'm going to show up and talk for another 45 minutes on this show. You get upset about something that I said on this show, by tomorrow you're upset about something new that I said, right? I'm moving on every day. Same thing Howard Stern does. He doesn't do, just do crazy things one day. He does crazy shit every day. You do crazy shit all the time, eventually people just say, holy shit, that's what that guy does. He's crazy. Crazy like a fox. That's Clay Travis. He can say anything. How often do you know how often I hear that? People in media? How do you get away with talking about all the stuff that you talk about? Because I'm fearless. If you're fearless, eventually people realize that you do it. Howard Stern, the other day, my wife's a big fan, listening to him, riding around in the car. I love to listen to Howard Stern, too. He's having a Mr. Black Penis contest. How many other radio show hosts in America 
can have a Mr. Black penis contest. Howard Stern does it. People are just like, that's what Howard Stern does. And it also, live in studio, Mr. Black Penis. They awarded a Mr. Black Penis Award. They do that because they've done so much crazy shit over the years. A decade from now, when I'm making $25 million a year, and I have an unbelievable media empire even compared to now, people are going to look back and they're going to be like, how did Clay Travis get to where he got? And the answer is, because I sat down in front of the mic for three hours every day and I was completely honest, and because I sat down in front of Periscope and Facebook every day and I was completely honest. Whether you agree or disagree with me, people who tell you exactly what they think are so rare that when you're willing to do it, you make a shit ton of money if you do it well. And that's what I do. I'm letting you see behind the curtain. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm an entertaining motherfucker. I'm telling you exactly what I do, and then I'm doing it. And then I'm making money doing it. And then all the people out there who hate me are driving around like crazy. Like, I can't believe Clay Travis. Did you see what he did today? See what he did yesterday? Oh, I got to see what he's going to do tomorrow. That's what I do. Now, I do it because I happen to have interesting opinions, I think, because I actually use my brain. I work hard. But it's not rocket science what I do. There's just not many people who can do it. Not many people can sit down in front of a mic and talk for three hours every day and be good 365 days a year. Not very many people can show up and sit down in front of a Periscope and a Facebook Live and respond to live comments while doing a live show every day for two years in a row now. If it were easy, everybody would do it. I'm fucking good at this. And you know what the market rewards? People who are fucking good at what they do. That's why it's good to live in America, motherfucker. All right, a couple more questions, then I got to bounce. Got to get my kids out of school. Thank you. Anonymous mailbag is always great. You guys ask fantastic questions. Pretty big self-importance for a guy without a TV show. Bro, I've turned down a TV show. Many times. TV will eventually happen. I'm not sure when it'll happen, but I make a good living without TV right now. Howard Stern turned down a fucking shit ton of TV shows. Ended up having a TV show, didn't he? Ended up doing pretty well for himself. TV will happen or it won't happen. I'm not worried about it. I got a great radio show that's dominating. I got this show. I got a website that's rolling. I got plenty of media. People aren't out there saying, I need more Clay Travis. I hope you are, but I got plenty of content every day, more than anybody else. And again, I can argue both sides of an equation pretty much better than anybody. Go back and listen. I can argue the Asian guy side. I can argue the United side. One of the best damn trial attorneys in the country. I just happened to talk about this on a living instead of being in a courtroom. My brain works, and it works well. And it works well on complex issues. I appreciate all of you. You guys are fantastic. My name is Clay Travis. This is Outkick the Show. We will be live tomorrow on 250 stations nationwide with Outkick the Coverage. Tell your friends. Sirius XM Channel 83. 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern. The podcast is up. It is fantastic today. If you're interested in LeBron, if you're interested in United Airlines, you can also go share this show. It'll be up on the podcast. If some of your friends are total fucking losers and they aren't paying attention to Clay Travis, they aren't reading the anonymous mailbag, you tell them the truth. They're wasting their lives. I am Clay Travis. DBAP. Go buy OutKick shirts at OutKickGear.com. Go check out Movement Watches. Again, black on black, bitches. It looks great. And it is at, let me tell you again, uh, MVMTWatches.com slash OutKick. I am Clay Travis. This is OutKick the Show. Don't be triggered. And if you are triggered, I don't give a fuck because I'm not a pussy. See ya.